to think you boys had lost my address. Well, pardon me, wouldn't forget you, Mr. Jordan. Uh, especially when you've run out of funds and ideas. <laughs> I believe we shook the posse. What you looking at, Jordan? Yonder. That little patch of light up in the sky? Comet. Newspaper says it'll be growing whole next fortnight. Huh? Two weeks. That's a comet? I hear they ain't lucky. Luck is all according to how a man plays it. It's a good thing I got a stake of 80 gold dollars in my boot heels and a shining plan in my head. I've always wanted to see one. What's so special about a comet? It is haughty and proud, carrying itself in its whole element, as if it were there alone. I'm quoting. Well, I can find the rest of the way, Mr. Buckhart. Already taking you 12 hours off your own assignment. Uh, don't report me, Forbes, but I never pass this down without stopping off. Now, what's special about Libertyville? Oh, I don't know. Makes you feel good there. Fine, decent people, first-class sheriff. And it makes you know you're in the United States. A friend of mine lives here. Oh? A lady? Yep. Don't make any sudden noises. She's over 90. Here is all the Santa Fe. <laughs> Sure is well preserved. Shh. She's sleeping. I'm Holly Telford. Yes, I've heard all about you, Marshal, a hundred times, but you can't see her. Holly? Is that business? Well, you might as well go in now. That was all your fault, rang and those fool spurs. Should I take them off? Then how would folks know you were around? It's real kindly of you visiting a poor, lonesome old woman. Sammy, where you been keeping yourself? <laughs> it, it, it has fetched me my walking cane. It belonged to my neighbor in Philadelphia. He was sickly. He didn't live to be but 73. Holly? Holly! Fifty cents a week I give that girl every living week, and she's always fussed over me. Except when I don't want. And I don't know how I put up with it. Now, Mrs. Alma, you know you just love me. I didn't say I didn't love you. I said you were shiftless. Mm. Well, can't you even fetch these poor lonely boys some coffee and pie? Mm. You go help. Don't require any help. Plus, he feels like. He feels like. No one can say I'm spoiling their chances. Senor Marshal. Arturo. You don't come to see me in two years. Constable Robredo, Deputy Forbes. <laughs> the Senor Deputy. Always tired of the same old notices. Same old easy life, huh? <laughs> Nothing ever happens around here. A peculiar thing, Senor. Just today. Today is in the hotel, two touristas, one, two. Such a crowd I don't remember in 10 years. <laughs> Fudge? Just coffee. You left that when you had here last fall? 15 cents. Must have been for the girl who served me. 
Ain't in my employ no more. Lightheaded. <laughs> yes, friends. I go to and fro in the land, walk up and down in it, and where the spirit moves, I stop and preach the word. Sorry if my voice annoys you, brother. This is a public room, Reverend. You keep to your side, I'll stay on mine. Whatever you say, brother. I'm not your brother. And don't bother to keep turning the other cheek. Sir, I will go down on my knees and clean your boots if only you'll walk the salvation in them. Another whiskey. Presently. Now we know they're not together. How did you figure that out? Because I've watched high binders before, and those two are pretty good. Mr. Stovepipe Hat is number three. Room three is ahead of the stairs, Mr. Bunsing. That'll be one dollar in advance. Oh, pardon my clumsiness. Back from our valise. Going up anyway, no trouble. What's that all about? You uh, stop not to say goodbye to the uh, the old lady as we leave. No, I think we're going to be staying around a while. How come? I'm wondering why a gun slick like Mr. Stovepipe had to be carrying around 25 or 30 pounds of peppermint suckers. You sure he's a gun? He wears his holster on a pivot. I don't figure it. That makes two of us. I have a hunch Constable Robledo will have to have some extra muscle. Sure looks like he could use some if he ever had trouble. Don't let that bay window fool you. That's solid chili pepper. Let's go talk to him. That is sure enough, Comet. Said in the paper. Maybe we could see it better if we got them put off them lights. That's a good idea. Put them lights off. Hey, turn them lights out in there. It's a sign of big troubles coming. What you say this is? Looks like pink gin. Uh, it's from Bathwater in room three. There's Bunsing. Maybe he's gonna see on the shot wound. Taste it. Amigos, this gun slapper ain't washed all over since before he's born. It's crazy as here. Peppermint. Suck this. Sure neither you want it? It's all yours, but don't crunch. Now, why would I lie? At perigee, the comet's tail will be approximately 50 million miles long, at which point our Earth will pass directly through it. Yeah, think it over. May I see this? Uh, sure, second column. Do you mind? Professor Louis Agassiz of Harvard, member of the science faculty of Cornell. Pretty good authority. It's what I said, didn't I? Paper's three weeks old. I didn't get to read it before. Come on, boys, let's have another look at her. Spit. And that's what they'll finally look like when they show up. With the red stripes washed off. Now. How will this help those three Sharpies work the comet here? You finished with this? It must be whizzing to leave a trail like that. 
No, the tail always points out sideways, away from the sun. 50 million miles of flame and gas. Here you are, folks. Get your comet pills here. Guaranteed to reduce the poisonous electricity and magnetization. Uh, comet pills, huh? How much? For a bet. For how many? 50 cents a piece. You're going to pay through the nose later on, mister. And then maybe there won't be none left. <laughs> Genuine Fidelio products, folks. Special family rates, five for two dollars. Hold on. I'll take five. We didn't have to wait long. <laughs> Here, son. Just like pepper suckers, but better. <laughs> sure, son. The flavoring hides the taste of them imported drugs. <laughs> here y'all, folks. Genuine Fidelio products right here. Step right up, special flavor. Could we take this leatherone into court? Hey, y'all, For peddling homemade medicine? Not under present right laws. Here. The angels sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, and the name of the star is Wormwood. Remember it, friends, Wormwood. Yes, friends, my scriptural studies lead me to believe that we are looking at that star now, as prophesied in Revelations 8:11, which goes on to say, many men die. It says it right here, many men die. But let not your hearts be troubled. I'm going to be staying here with you, and I'm going to be preaching to you by the light of the Wormwood Star till the destruction is consummated, and for the whole week, my text will be, and the righteous were gathered together in Jerusalem, and they were saved. Hear it, friends. They shall be saved. Glory. This ain't Jerusalem, Reverend. How's a body get to Jerusalem? Friends, the promises of the scriptures are never vain or cruel. Now, in this text, I believe that the word Jerusalem simply means home. The town or city where each of you was born, where your dear ones lay buried awaiting the resurrection, where there will be no parting forever. Well, I'm from Maine. Can't make that in a week, no more than it was Jerusalem. Well, there too, friend. One has to hope that Providence accepts the wish for the deed. Now, when that hour strikes, if we're really on the road, if we're trying with all our hearts and souls, now, who remembers the old hymn, Rock of Ages? Come and help me, my child. Rock of ages, work for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from the wound. Tell me something. Why do you want to tear this town apart? If it's against federal law to proclaim the word, take me, Marshal. You're no more a preacher than I am. You're an Apache. No one would accept you as a preacher. I'd pull out tonight if I could raise some money on the ranch. I just might take it off your hands, mister. I was looking for a ranch when I come through here. <laughs> I guess nobody but an infidel like me would risk the gamble now. But anyone who is interested, my office will be table number one, right in the cafe here. And we haven't a law to stand on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Listen to me. That comet isn't going to harm anybody. The tail is 10,000 times thinner than the air you're breathing. Well, it's burning gas. I'm heading for my hometown while I still got time. That sunlight on dust. Even if we collide with the head of it, it's no more than a bucket of gravel. Little voice of reason, amigo. Nothing. Marshal, she's had a sinking spell. 
just lay and sort of looked at the ceiling all night, like she was slipping away. You mean she stopped talking? Except she kept asking for you. Please come, Marshal, but don't tell her about the comet or anything. All right. Hasta la vista. You also, senor? Home to Vermont, Constable. Family gravestones date and clear back to the Battle of Bennington. He give you a good prize. Fair enough, considering. Today I'm full of grief. Ain't paid last year's tax bill yet. Was figuring on protesting it. But ain't got time now. Yeah. Counterfeit! Have your title deeds ready, boy. Please don't waste my time. Sign right there. Puerco. Dirty, dirty pig puerco. You referring to me, mister? To you and to this. Eat it. Eat all of it, senor. For your health. And also the documents. I know they're keeping something from me, Marshal. This whole week I've been hearing them wagons rumbling by outside. It's just your imagination. You'll tire yourself. Now, Sammy, what's going on outside? Will you promise to get some sleep if I tell you? Yeah, I'll try. But I won't promise. Why, it might be a ghost strike. Your wagon is heading for Texas for. You wouldn't expect me to sleep through that. You're needed at the hotel, Marshal. No witnesses, huh? There was any that gone. I was lucky to catch him, just saddling up. You killed him, right? Me? You shot him in the back. Me. The, this ain't legal, Marshal. Oh, more legal than shooting a peace officer in the back. All right, Marshal. I done it. I killed him. Just help me up, will you? Just, just leave me up. Help me, can't you help me? I can't stand no more! Uh, uh, it's Jordan you should have done this to, not me. The preacher? Sure, Bunsen and me, we never did get to cut but 25%. We just took our orders from him. Now, why would he be staying on here now that we've got you and the title deeds? For the meanness of it and the honor. Oh, you don't know him. He, he used to be a big actor up in Frisco. That's all he cares about, even more than the money. Laughing at people back in his hand. Being smarter than the law. <laughs> Sounding of the trumpet, the sepulchres will be rent open and the dead come forth. Love waxes cold and ye shall see the abomination of desolation. Then let him that is on the housetop not come down to take anything from his house. Woe to those that are with child in those days, for there shall be tribulation such as was not seen since the beginning of the world. Amen. Day of wrath, and there shall arise false prophets, and the beast shall ascend from the bottomless pit with seven heads and ten horns, and upon the horns ten crowns, and upon the heads the name of blasphemy. Let him that has an ear hear it. What are you doing here? 
Somebody came by the window and told her. Had to be on the doings or she'd lost her mind. Just made me hitch thunderation to the old buckboard. Don't know how I got that heavy chair up in there. Then boosting while she scrambled. Now she's asleep. Good. Now you turn this buckboard around and take her straight home. You help her for us. Sure, Mr. Buckner. But first, let us bow our heads in prayer. <laughs> And I was a young girl, Lynn. And almost everything looked splendid. You leave that horse alone. Don't you dare lose me. Hold it. This comet's been here before? Well, of course, every 74 years. President Jefferson explained about it in all the news sheets. Didn't hurt nothing? Well, what could it hurt up there? Just beaming down. And I say unto you, listen not to the voices of dissension. Heed not the vulgar platitude of the soothsayers. Look not upon that awesome thing in the heavens. Long as it lasted. We sat under the apple tree every night after supper. Me and Ma had a crocheting. I remember her saying to us, who but the current Lord could have thought of setting such a pretty thing up there for the pleasure of his children? Comedy is over. Looks like. The joke is on me now, Buckhart. Yes, Marshal. As a philosopher said, how should we know the face of simple goodness if there were no evil in the world? And don't fail to catch my performance at Roswell when I hang. May I lead them in a final hymn? Friends, the peril is over and gone. Let us raise our voices in praise of everlasting forgiveness. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is the hand of the great friend of the great man. I was just 17, and I thought to myself, Bound if I won't live to see her come around again next time. Well, I have. Now I'm tired. I'm ready to go home. All right, ma'am. She can see all the comets in the galaxy.
can't figure. How far can a man ride when he's wounded? Well, he might not have been hit as bad as the driver thought, Billy. Oh, morning, Sam. Didn't expect you till the end of the week. Well, the complaint was withdrawn. I left him shaking hands. Anything happen here while I've been gone? Gentleman Frank Deegan's back in the territory. We've been searching the hills for him all night. Yep, he held up the eastbound stage last night. He was recognized by the stage driver. Recognized and had a piece taken out of him. You still couldn't find him? Nope. We lost his trail on the road west side of town. Please said if you'd take a look at that trail, Sam. Of course, I know you've been riding four days, but Morrison ain't gonna like it when he finds out that Gentleman Frank has slipped through our hands again. All right. I'll get out there right away. You better take Billy with you. He'll show you where we lost the trail. I guess there's no use to tell you this, Sam, but don't let that gentleman part fool you the way it once fooled me. Twenty years ago, he was the fastest gun in the Southwest. Now, he may be only a cheap road agent today, but his fangs are still there. Come on, Billy. Tess, stop gulping. I have to let Mickey out before I go to school. Well, that certainly won't take more than a minute. I thought I'd ride her out to the pasture. Now, what did I tell you about riding that poor calf? All right. I won't. Bye, Martha. Bye, Tess. Isn't it better staying in here where it's warm? I think I'll buy a bell for your neck. So we always know where you are. Would you like that? You don't have to be afraid of me. I won't hurt you. But you mustn't call out. I promise not to call, huh? I promise. as I told a little girl. I'll be out of here by tonight and on my way to the border, but until then, I want you both around here where I can see you. Come, miss her immediately in school. They won't think twice about her not being there. You could have kept her home to do the chores. Let her go to school. Not to school. She stays here around the house. Run along, dear. Uh, play around the house. I'll listen to your tests. You know who I am, don't you? You're an outlaw. Yeah, I'm an outlaw. Outlaws hurt people. You don't want me to hurt your mother, do you? She isn't my mother. She's Aunt Martha. And you better not hurt her. Well, then you better listen carefully. All I want to do is get away from here after dark. Now, if nobody stops me, if nobody knows that I'm around here, then maybe that's what I'll do. And Martha won't get hurt. Now you go on and get out there and play where I can see you. Play in the backyard, Tess. Oh, little girl, listen here. That bell I heard you talking about, huh? You, uh... You think that this is kind of covered, huh? I wouldn't take your old money. I hope she understands that I meant what I said about you. Because I always keep my word. The word of gentleman Frank Deegan? So you recognize me? Your description's been around for quite a while. Well, I'm happy to see that you're not frightened, Martha. That means that you won't make any foolish moves. At least I hope it means that. You got any bandages in the house? 
You need a doctor, not a bandage. The bullet passed right through. I'll just settle for packing this wound enough to ride on. Now you come on here and help me get up. Huh? Now, Martha, listen. Now, let me make myself plain. I need you, and I need your help. Now, you give it willingly, and nothing's going to happen to you. But you try any tricks, and I'm going to kill you. Where did the gentleman come from? Rather a misnomer, ain't it? Now, listen, I don't want that child to leave the vicinity of this house. Because I'm going to be walking a very fine line until I get well out of town. And if I should fall off, you're going to fall off with me. Now here his horse is walking. Now that doesn't make sense. First he's riding like blazes, then he slows to a walk. No, and he's being chased. Here's your answer, Billy. He abandoned the horse. Sam, look at the amount of blood on this saddle. He couldn't have had the strength to go a hundred yards further on foot. He must be close by. Ah, that's an old trick, Billy. When you're wounded and being followed, to get off the horse and send him on, hoping your enemy will pick up the search where the horse is found. You mean he's back a ways near town? Well, it's not taking any chances. You scout on ahead. I'll backtrack, see if I can pick up his trail the other side of town. <laughs> I'd have done as much for a dog. I still thank you. There's a horse in the barn. Take him and ride on. I'd like nothing better. But I don't think I get very far in daylight. Mother. Mother, I've become very attached to you. So much so that I'd enjoy your presence right here in this room. Thank you once again. Your politeness is beginning to sicken. I'll bet at another time that it would have intrigued you. You understand she doesn't have to just sit there. She can do what she normally does, as long as she stays somewhere around the house. Do you expect her to be skipping rope under these conditions? It's only a day out of her life, Mother. I hope she never has another one like it. He lives here. Well, this is really my day picking on a marshal's house. Any reason why he'd want to come home this time of day? He's just getting back from a border trip, but 
I didn't expect him for several days. He'll go right out. He never stops at home during the day. Now listen here, little Tess. I want you to listen to me. Listen careful. If he comes in and leaves, everything will be all right. But if you say anything to him... I won't. I promise. I won't say anything. All right. Now, everybody concerned can be sleeping quite peacefully tonight, including myself, which I consider very important. And for his own sake, I hope that Buckhart's got enough Apache intuition to prefer sleeping to dying. Now, let's get this stuff into the kitchen. Come on, now. <laughs> you feel like nobler sacrifice than yourself. I can open this door and kill Buckhart the instant you make a sound. And believe me, I have no compunctions about killing a man. You have no compunctions, period. Why modify it? Just so as you can understand. school today? Miss Ferguson's sick. Oh, sorry to hear that. Is Martha here? Uh, she's taking care of Miss Ferguson. And I'm doing my homework. So you don't have to worry about me having nothing to do. I have to read this whole book by tomorrow. Oh, is it interesting? Deerslayer by James Fenimore Cooper. That's a lot of reading for a little girl in one day. Oh, I can do it if I skip the hard words. Sam, if you'll excuse me now, I'd like to get on with my reading. Sure, Tess. She is doing well, I think. She's being tortured. No more than I am. Aren't you leaving now? Well, I, I was just trying to decide if I should fix myself a meal before going into the office. That is, if there's any food in the house. There's not a thing, Sam. Martha took all the food over to Miss Ferguson's. She's over to an end. What did you expect? I can't leave you here all day without any food. I'd better take you into town with me. No. No. I mustn't. I mean, I want to go. I have to read my book. You can read the book in town, or if you prefer, I'll tell you the story. I know it quite well. No! Martha said I was to stay here. I can't disobey her. Tess, you're coming with me. I'll explain to Martha later. No! I'm not going with you! You don't understand, do you? How... How sometimes a girl likes to be alone. With... With no grown-ups around. You don't understand children at all. Nobody does. Tess, I've always tried to understand you. Then go away. Go away and leave me alone. You know what it's costing me to say those things. I could kill you for what you're doing to her. Well, I, uh, I guess I haven't really tried very hard to understand. You'll have to forgive me. I'm sorry. If you want to be alone, that's your privilege. I'm leaving now, Tess. I'll see you later. Goodbye, Tess. He fooled you. He took her with him. He didn't fool me. He just did what I half expected him to do. Then you better go now while you can. There are times when you wait. If what I'm thinking is correct, this place will be surrounded by deputies in half an hour. I said before I'd be walking a very fine line before I got away from this place. I never guessed just what a fine line it would be. Then leave. Leave now. And I also said that you'd be my ticket out of town. You know, it's more than likely that I'll have to carry that ticket all the way to the border. Tess. 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 Tess.
Yes. I'm sorry I forced you to come with me. I couldn't leave you there. Did the man have Martha in the kitchen? Sam, I didn't mean what I said. I didn't. I lied to you. I know. I said such terrible things to you. I'm sorry. It's all right, honey. Now listen, Tess. You must go to school where you'll be safe. But he'll hurt Martha if I don't come back. No, he won't. She's his only chance to escape. Oh, Sam, let him go. Tess, I promise you I'll do nothing but see that Martha is safe. When you come home from school tonight, she'll be waiting for you. That's a promise. Are you sure he won't hurt Martha? Trust me, Tess. You go on to school and trust me. And say nothing to anyone. Just try to be as calm as you can. I'll try. You run along, Tess. It'll take about half an hour to get out of here, I guess. There's still time to leave. They'd run me down before I reached the hills. He's coming back here alone. He couldn't have gone to town. No. Well, that deal I spoke of, it might come off quite well. Deegan! Frank Deegan! Gentleman Frank, if you prefer. It makes the gentleman sound indecent. Please. Sam's a good man. Yeah, also very intelligent. Which could work out for the both of us. I'm listening, Buckhart. I'm all alone. As far as I know, nobody else knows you're here. I'm still listening. If you're planning to use Martha to help you escape, I want you to remember one thing. You submit her to the humiliation of riding out with you, and I'll track you down and get you no matter where you go. And I believe him. What's my alternative? My horse is over there. He's fast and tireless. You get by me and he's yours. Don't. Give yourself up. You're an expert with a gun, Deegan. Come out and prove it. If you're as good as your reputation, you'll have a good horse and no trouble getting over the border. You'll never get by him, even though he isn't a gunfighter. I wish he were. The fact that he's simply a brave man somewhat frightens me. How about it, Deegan? Get out from behind a woman's skirts and prove the gentleman. It's a good offer. Maybe the best I'll be getting. I'm begging you. Give yourself up. I don't think he can outshoot me. But he's got a lot of things in his favor. For one thing, he's not as tired of life as I am. Come on out, Frank. You faced 50 guns in your lifetime. Or is that reputation as phony as a gentleman? Please, don't go out there. I don't have a choice. How many deputies are waiting to cut me off? They're all the other side of town, Frank. No one will stand in your way. You get by me, you go right to the horse. Chances are you're gonna die in a minute, Buckhart. Your chances are something we should discuss, Frank. You lost a lot of blood. I doubt if you're half as fast as you think you are now. Why not take your chances in court? And hang? No, Buckhart. Mine will come all right, but not by hanging. Somewhere, sometime, the end of the road will be marked by the unusual and the unexpected. But never by hanging. An Apache Federal Marshal 
is the unusual, though, isn't it? Now, let's hope I'm not being pessimistic. Frank! Your days of fast drawing are over. I'm ready to disprove that statement, Buckeye. Now! You were right, Buckeye. My day is over long past. Each man should leave something behind, shouldn't he? Let me leave you your life. Something I... I might have taken. I guess they just want to be different, Tess. Different from other people? Uh-huh. But they just don't know how to go about it. I want to be different. Well, everybody does, Tess. It's a good thing. When no one is hurt and it benefits the people around you, it's a wonderful thing to be different. Can I ride her across the yard? I don't think she's quite old enough, Tess. Like you're different, Sam. <laughs> like you're different, young lady. <laughs> and someday everybody will love you for it. Come on, Mickey. Back to your mommy. Maybe she'll be old enough tomorrow. Sheriff, I guess you caught me this time. I've been tracking you ever since you butchered that diamond two-case steer, Bill. You put me in kind of a spot. What do you want me to do, watch my wife and kids starve? <laughs> ah, you caught him, eh, Sheriff? Good work. Looks like you can count on two votes from the Cole brothers next election. We'll handle it now, Sheriff. You've done your bit, and we thank you for it. Can't leave me here. They'll kill me. You know they will. Oh, how you talk, Don. We were thinking of asking you over the house. Thought we'd have an old-fashioned steak fry long as you went all that bother. <laughs> now look, Bert. Don't give it a thought, Sheriff. We know what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't go too far. bother you reading, but the mail just got in. Yes? Well, I opened it. Well, good. There's something here I thought you'd ought to see. Well, you've been in Choya Mesa, where this letter comes from? About two years ago. Sheriff up there is Clifford Shaw, a good man by all reports. Whoever wrote this doesn't think so. He's either a coward or criminally derelict in the performance of his duty. Doesn't think much of himself either. He didn't sign the letter. I suppose the best thing to do is forget about it. I'm not sure. The letter mentions the Cole brothers killing that homesteader up there, William Downs. Remember Shaw filed a routine report on it last week? I broke out the report. What about the file on the Colbs? That too. Did you find anything interesting? Well, the Cole brothers between them have killed 11 men. Four of the 11, including Downs, since they moved their brand to Joya Mesa. No arrests, Sam. No arrests. Eleven men gunned down, and no judge or jury has ever heard a single word of testimony. How did they get away with it, Sam? I don't know, but I think I'd better find out. 
How's the new book, Sam? Any good? Mm-hmm. Want to leave it with me? I get to read it while you're gone. Sure. Sam? What kind of a book is this? Socrates. Well, what's it written in? Greek. Greek? <laughs> I don't think Socrates could write in English, but... something to break the monotony and show I miss you. All right, everybody have a drink and it's on me. I said I need a glass for my friend. Never mind, Sheriff. I don't serve Indians in this saloon, Sheriff. You're serving a United States Marshal, you understand? Get him a glass. So everybody drink up. More coffee, Mr. Buckhart? Oh, thank you, Mr. Shaw. The dinner was wonderful. Well, thank you. Mm, thanks, honey. Yes, sir, that Ollie's getting good. He's learning my tricks. If I'm not careful, one of these days he's going to pen me. Well, I can't imagine anyone pinning you, darling. Well, that's so, Mrs. Shaw. Your husband takes care of himself very well. Yes, Cliff always takes care of himself very well, Mr. Buckhart. That's what a man's supposed to do, isn't it, Sam? If you don't look out for yourself, nobody's going to do it for you. That's what I always say. Yes, that's what you always say. And I believe you mean it. Well, enough of wrestling talk for tonight. What brings you to Choi? Anything I can help you with? Well, I want to talk to the Cole brothers tomorrow afternoon in your office. Bert and Wally? Can you have them there? Well, I don't know if they'll want to come. It's a pretty busy time of the year. And use this. Subpoena? Can you tell me what it's all about? They killed a man named William Downs. Oh, that's right. He, uh, he was trespassing on their range. He butchered a steer that was clearly marked with their brand. I investigated the whole thing. I know. I read your report before I left Santa Fe. Anything wrong with it? No, not with the report. But Downs is the 11th man the Cole boys have killed. Only four of them around here in my jurisdiction. I know. I think it's time they answered some questions. Sam, this, uh, this isn't going to be as easy as it seems. I know the Cole brothers. Now, subpoena or no subpoena, they're not going to come. Or if they do, it'd just be to make trouble. Why? Their rights will be protected. I expect you to make that clear to them. 
I know these men, Sam. I know the way they think. They are used to protecting their own rights in their own way. Eleven men found that out, didn't they, Sheriff? Are the Cole boys the law in this territory, or are we? Sam, listen to me. Now, I know what I'm saying. We are rousing a nest of rattlesnakes with a feather duster. When you ride out there tomorrow morning, I want you to tell them I start the hearing at 2 o'clock. And what if they come shooting? In that case, we take their guns until the hearing is over. Bird and Wally Cobb? Sam, you're dreaming. A man would be crazy to try to take their guns. See how right you were about my husband, Mr. Buckhart? Cliff takes real good care of himself. Stay out of this, Edie! Poor Cliff. Poor man. I'm sorry, Mrs. Shaw. I didn't mean to upset your husband. He'd be more upset if he knew about the letter that brought you here. How do you know about the letter? I wrote it. Bud? I am. Two men are early. The hearing's at two o'clock. Indian, we can tell time better than you. Not gonna be any hearing. Two o'clock or any other time. Are you prepared to defy a federal subpoena? We don't know any more about that than a red Indian knows about Sunday. We're just telling you, mister, to get on your horse and go back where you came from. We don't want no hearings. First thing you know, every shirt tail outfit in the country will be hollering for a law, man, to drag the Cole brothers in for some nonsense here. We aim to stop that right here. Sheriff, tell your friend you're the law here in Cheyenne. Anytime we don't like the way you're doing your job, we'll elect somebody else. Mr. Cole, this is a federal territory. The sheriff is responsible to the office of the U.S. Marshal. I'm not going to argue with you. Be here at two. <laughs> Talk's real mean for an Indian. If you're smart, you won't be here at two o'clock. I'll be here. So will you. You're under arrest. Sheriff, get the guns. Sheriff, I'd think a long time before taking orders from this Indian. Because people are going to remember a long time. Particular people. There are folks like us Coles might never forget it. The guns. I'm sorry, Sam. Bert's right. I've got to live here. It's my town. You just kicked your town away. <laughs> you move pretty fast, Indian. Want to try racing a bullet for that gun of yours? <laughs> Tell the truth, you ain't got a lot to lose. You did a bad thing drawing on us. I think it's about time you was whipped down a few sizes to fit your britches. Put a rope on him. When that Indian comes to, put him on his horse and see that he gets out of Choya. Just the way he is. Pass the word around. Anybody so much as gives him a drink of water will hear from me. And they won't like what they hear. You heard what Bird said. They might circle back. That's why I'm helping him. Someone's got to protect me. Thank you, Mrs. Shaw. Sheriff, the gun. I want it. Sam, I'm taking all the chance I can right now. 
If Bert or Wally hear about this, they'll be back. Oh, you'll be safe. I'll be glad to tell them it was my idea. If it'd been up to you, Sam has still been out there lying on the street where they left him. You and the other men in Troya, Mesa. Now, Edie, stop nagging me. I've got to do what I think is best for us. Now, Sam, just try seeing it my way. Choya Mesa is a nice, quiet little town. No problems. I run it. The Cobes own the land for miles all around it. Now, what happens on their land, they take care of. If I step out of line, they can dry this town up like a snail on a hot rock. Now, I had no choice but to chop that gun out of your hand. You chop more than the gun. You chop respect for the law. If you want respect, send in enough law to do the job. I am one man. There are 136 people in this town who make their living out of the coal branch. I'm not going to ask them to starve so I can be a hero. Well, I'm sure they'll miss very few meals on that account. Oh, Edie, please. This is between Sam and me. You're wrong, Sheriff. You're fighting this with yourself. Now, I'm giving you one last chance to save a few of the pieces. The gun! No. Where are you going? Get my horse. I'm going after them. Took you so long. Where's your brother? Bert? He figures we taught you a lesson. He's halfway back to the ranch by now. Me? I don't figure Indians got brains enough to know anything. That's why I came back. How do you feel about shooting an unarmed man? I ain't shooting an unarmed man. I'm shooting an unarmed Indian. That's different. Look what you've done. You've shot Wally Cobe. See how easy it is. Sheriff, you're under arrest. Give me a gun. Don't waste time on me, Sam. You've got one chance to get out alive before Bert finds out about this. Take it. You heard what the sheriff said? Bert will tear this town out by the roots now. <laughs> you better not be here. None of us will be here. I'm taking you to Santa Fe. You better come along too, Mr. Shaw. How far do you think you're gonna get, huh, Andy? How far? <laughs> Let's go. yours now, Indian. It's a place over there. We can hold them off. Go ahead. Get him off. over there and sit down beside him. What are you doing? Lay your hand. You think that's necessary? You give me reason to think otherwise? Or it'll kill him. Kill them both. <laughs> difference it make to you. She ain't your woman anymore. All right, Indian. Come out with your hands up. I'll let the others go. Two minutes. Think it over. It's all right if you want to leave, Mr. Shaw. I don't suppose even Bert Cope would shoot a woman. Let me talk to him. Maybe we can make a deal. After all, we got something to bargain with. 
I wouldn't count on that after he talks to his brother. Besides, I've got a better reason for staying. I'm seeing what a man should be for the first time. What a man can be. You don't know how important that is to a woman, Sam. You hear that, Shaw? Your wife's sweet talking, that red Indian. Sam, I've lived with a frightened man for five years. I know what it did to me. What it did to him. I saw his face the day he came home after the cold shot Bill Downs. And I knew all about it right then. And I knew it had to end. I don't know about you, Sheriff. It sounds to me like she's saying that Indian's a better man than you. Shut up. Time's up, Indian! <laughs> Get over there with your horse. On the side of the shack. You! Over there with him! Getting a little hot for you, ain't it? Gonna get hotter. through the window. Don't worry about hitting anything. I just want them to think I'm still here. Sam, give me loose from him. You can handcuff me to that post if you have to. You do, and you'll never take another breath. Edie, I'm not going to shoot him. Well, then put down his gun. No. I'm taking charge now. Hey, don't shoot! I want to talk. I just thought you'd want to know. One of your shots killed your brother. You're lying. That Indian murdered him. No, you did. And I'm arresting you. Kill my brother? And arrest me for it? All right, sure. You try and take me. If you haven't forgot how it's done. Bird, don't force me to shoot you. You're all bark and no bite. Go ahead, draw. Bird, I'm giving you fair warning. Let's see if there's anything but yellow dog behind that badge. Draw! I killed him, Sam. I killed Bert Kolb. He murdered Cliff, so I killed him. Cliff went out there to arrest him, Sam. Do you understand? He went out there to arrest him. Yes, Mrs. Shaw. I understand. Back to San 
Santa Fe? It's home. Until last night, I didn't think that I had a home. But this morning, I know I, I belong in Troy Mesa. I'm staying here, Sam. That's a good decision. Sam, that letter that I wrote to Santa Fe, will it be uh, kept in the files? As a rule, it would be. That is, if there were a letter. Thank you, Sam. Senor, but uh, it is closed. I'm hungry. So am I, but we close. I said I'm hungry. He is hungry. Now, what's on the stove? Vamos a darle de comer unos frijolitos o tamales, lo que hay de pronto. I tell you, señor, and if you could have seen the way he looked at us, we cannot refuse. What exactly did he look like? Was he tall? No, short. No, señor, medium, and, and perhaps 21. Young uh, and light-headed, almost blonde. No, senor. Dark and with a face like an innocent. Ah, but with this call of a devil. That is true, senor. If you only see the way he tore out the reward poster from the wall, it is Billy. There is no doubt. ¿Verdad, flaco? Seguro, chaparro. See, right here in Santa Fe. You think, wait till the news goes around. Seems it already has. So it's true, huh? Si, senor. The key came here at close in time last night and forced us to feed him. Think you can take him, Marshal? He'll be taken. No jail can hold Billy. They found it out in Lincoln. No lawman can gun him down. Guess that leaves it up to me. Rand, there are easier bounties for you to hunt. Easier, but not bigger. Three or four awards offered for him. I like that. Wouldn't hardly pay for you to run up against Billy, Marshal. No bounty for you, just a Marshal's wage. That reward ought to be paid to somebody who can appreciate it. I want this one. You're welcome to it. Wait. I could use some help, maybe. I'd be generous with a split. I'm sure you're a generous man. I figured you'd see that. What's this help you want? Your officer will get the word where he is. Just let me know first. If we learn where he is, we'll take him. If you want your bounty, earn it. Go out and find him yourself. All right, Marshal, I will. And I'll take him before you remember that. Hey, come on, stay with me and have a little drink. Why should I? Because you are the senor Billy? Shh. Hey, come on now, not so loud. Law's got ears. But you are not afraid of the law, senor. No? <laughs> I got a little present for you. Here we are. This? This is tea. 
I was told the Senor Billy would have much gold to buy fine presents for a girl. You see, I'm a little low right now, but I'm going to have some pretty soon. See? Si. Will you come back then? I'm not even sure you are the Senor Billy. I'll show you. Hi, Sam. Hi. No matter if he's miles away, he's got to have a report. Even though there's nothing to report yet. Well, he's the boss. Don't I know. Well, you take care of the office. I got to ride out and meet the Pecos stage. Why? The company just got a wire. Their shotgun messenger was left behind because of illness. The stage will be coming in without one. And with Billy the Kid around... Oh, no, you know that's probably just another false alarm. I know. There, Billy the Kid's being reported from Texas to California. And the devil only knows which one's the right one. Uh, sometimes I think every boy that age is playing at being Billy. Still, can't take the chance. No, you're right. Go right out and meet it. And Sam, remember, playing or no, these kids can be dangerous. So if you find them, you be careful. And I'll see you tonight. Thanks. the kid. Don't shoot, Billy. I ain't even armed. Hey, that's Billy, folks. I don't nobody try nothing. There ain't nobody gonna pull any gun on you, Billy. Uh, no need for any killing. We just don't nobody get any ideas. Oh, sure, Billy. Here's a Wells Fargo pouch. Do you want the people to put the things in a hat? Well, now, why not? Uh, all right. Just as you say, Billy. Hey, see, there ain't nobody gonna hold out anything on you. Now, there's no need of you getting riled. Uh, we ain't gonna cause you no trouble, honest. All right, but just don't nobody get any ideas, because I can draw mighty fast. That's so, Billy. You want to draw, go ahead and draw. Under arrest. Well, hang me. Can you imagine that? Well, I didn't break no law. I didn't take nothing of theirs. I didn't ask for nothing. They just give it all to me. What about that? Well, I didn't ask for it. They just give it to me themselves. Well, he didn't have to. See, he's Billy. They just give it all to me. So you've got nothing to arrest me for. You go on into town. We'll follow. Now, I'm telling you the truth, mister. I didn't do nothing. You got nothing to arrest me for. All right, get up. Let me out of here, mister. I didn't break no law in Santa Fe. You're a wanted man. Billy the Kid, remember? You swore you'd never be taken alive. Seems like you changed your mind. I think you better start talking. What about? 
Well, for instance, you could tell me where some of your gang are hiding. Like Bob Beckwith? Oh, well, now I think he's somewhere around Lincoln, maybe. What about Joe Grant? Uh, uh he, he headed for Prescott. That's a pretty hard trip for a dead man. Dead? Both Joe Grant and Bob Beckwith were killed by Billy the Kid. How far is Wilcox's ranch from Fort Sumner? Wilcox's? The place you hid from Pat Garrett. Oh, I know. Uh, uh, about a day's ride. It's only 12 miles. Come on, boy, give it up. I knew from the minute I saw you, you weren't Billy the Kid. What's your real name? Clancy James. How old are you? 19. Where's your home? I got none. My pa died of drink, and my ma, she just runs some old boarding house in Denver. Uh, there's nothing there for me. There are plenty of lawful occupations. You didn't have to try masquerading as Billy. Now, I never said I was. But you let people think so. Now, I never hurt no one, and you can't prove I did. You are ready to. You are willing to kill to be like Billy. Why? Well, why not? He's a big man. He made a big man of himself. Has he? Everybody looks up to him and fears him. And you know something? I could have been as big as he is if I had the chance. And maybe I just will yet. Out here in Santa Fe, you won't. Hey, what are you going to do? Never mind, come with me. I see you got him. Yes, but you were right. So I see. Just another crazy youngster asking for trouble. But I didn't do nothing, and you can't keep me in jail. We're not going to. Gonna send you back to your mother in Denver. Oh, now you can't do that. You'd rather stay here, boy? Take a look out there. Probably the lynch talk has started already. <laughs> no, I'm not Billy. Now, you can tell him that. And spoil Sam's moment of glory? He ought to be able to stay a hero at least for morning. Now, listen, mister, you gotta help me. Well, uh... All right. Now, Sam will take you out of town safely. Then you keep on going and don't come back. And if you'll take my advice, you won't try being a bad man. You're not very good at it. Noche, Senor Ren. Perhaps you mourn in the lost bounty. That's too bad, Senor Ren. Vámonos. Vámonos, ya se enojó este. Vámonos por. and has taken Billy the Kid outside of town to some safe place, maybe. Or maybe to Lincoln County, where he is most wanted. You don't believe so, that? Ahora sí se va a poner bueno. Ya se les pegó el ran. A ver si nos paga la comida que se trajo el Billy aquí.
leaving me here? You won't lose your way. But I'd travel a while before making camp tonight. Where's the road go? Pecos. You can turn north there. It's the best way this time of year. And boy, that was good advice you got. Go home. Well, I don't need no advice from you. Or from him neither. And next time, maybe it'll be different. I'll let there be a next time. Here. What's that? Food. Senor Marshal, you put him in a safe place, huh? Who? We did a kid, who else? We saw you take him out of town, Senor. And it was a very small move. Verdad, mi flaco? Seguro, Chaparro. And you deserve a medal for your courage. Senores, that was not Billy the Kid. He was not? You mean he was a, a kind of fit? He's not an outlaw at all? No, he's just a harmless boy. And we fed him for free with no pay? And there's no bounty on him. He's not even wanted at all. Only by his mother, maybe. Ay, Chihuahua. I think Senor Rand doesn't know this. Rand? Si, Senor. He still left the bounty. Verdad, mi flaco? Seguro, mi chaparro. He left right after you did. We fear that you might have trouble with him, Senor. I hope you put him in a, in a safe place, Senor. For his own good. Ay, man, ahora sí se armó. Ahora sí, mano. Hijo, qué bárbaro, hombre. Vamos. ask yours, you answer to Billy. Maybe so, maybe not. Sure, that's the way you want it. I don't care what name a man travels under. Can I sit down? What happened to your friend? What friend? The one you left Santa Fe with, the marshal. How do you know that? You passed me going out. Something happened to him? Maybe. Is that any business of yours? No, just as long as he's not around. Well, don't worry about that. He won't be showing up here. Good. You running from the law? Oh, not running, just not in very friendly terms. The marshal have a little accident, maybe? You sure ask a lot of questions, mister. Oh, no offense, friend. Don't matter to me what happened to him. You could gun all the marshals in the territory, it'd only make me happy. Matter of fact, I was fixing to help you. Yeah, how? That don't matter now. You manage fine by yourself. You've been following us. Right way. I circled around. Why? Why do you want to help me? Well, I figured maybe you and me could team up. Partners. Unless you got plans. No, I got no plans. Well, unless you got someplace better to go, why not come with me to Lordsburg? I know some easy pickings there. Yeah? Big money. Big enough to interest even a man like you. Oh, why don't you get it yourself, then? Well, like I told you, I need a partner. Take two of us. You interested? Maybe. I'd sure be honored to have a man like you for a partner. You would? You interested? Well, then, all right. Why not? Fine. Hey, that smells good. You hungry? Thanks.
we can get there by Saturday. Hold up on the spot I know, then I'll contact some people and figure the time and place. But you didn't say what we'd have to do. That don't hardly matter to a man like you, does it? What you have to do, we do. Sure. Well, naturally, I want your advice on all the plans. A man with your experience ought to have to say. I bet you could tell some stories, huh? Well, I don't know how to talk about them. You might have known that. Once you really do things, don't talk about it. Once you don't do nothing to the talking. That's the way I see it. Now, maybe we better get moving. All right, you take care of the fire and I'll go saddle up. All right. Hold it, Rand. Let's drop the gun. You can gun me down and call it law. Oh, no. Where are you? Come on out of light where I can see you. As I drop the gun. Look, Marshal, I offered you a deal. Split the bounty. That still goes an even split. There's nothing to split. That's not Billy the Kid. That's Clancy James. He's not even wanted. What are you trying to give me? The truth. Why do you think I let him go? Let him go, huh? He said he got away. Ask him. Sure, he'd say that. You'd take him in alive. Y y you mean he's a bounty hunter? One of the best. Or worst. This is some kind of a trick, isn't it? It's no trick. I'm giving you a chance to put up your gun and move on. Oh, just like that. All right, off and let you take him again. I tell you, he's not wanted. Look at him. Does that look like Billy the Kid? If you'd have shot him, it would have been murder. Frankly, Marshal, that wouldn't bother me. You mean he was going to shoot me? In the back. He was going to shoot me for money? Why? Stop it, boy! Hold it, Marshal. I've got something else to tell you. You said I'd be wasting a bullet. I don't think so. Why not? Because there's always a reward for a man who kills a Marshal. But I didn't kill no Marshal. I didn't kill nobody. He means me, Clancy. He means he'll shoot me and blame it on you. I told you I'd collect. No, you can't do that. Because then he'd shoot me. Now, you can't do that, mister. Stay out of this, boy. Now, Rand, you're under arrest. Put your gun down. But you just try and take it, Marshal. I get him? He's dead. <laughs> you see, Marshal. You should have stayed out of this. You should have let me handle it. I couldn't do that. It was my fight, Marshal. Partner. Bounty hunter. I'm, I'm glad you're all right, though, Marshal. I mean, you were decent to me. Even if you are a lawman. Marsha, am I going to die? Yes. <laughs> I wasn't I much like Belly, was I? But maybe if I just, just lived a little bit longer, I, 